Hello, and welcome to episode 113 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And this week we're going to talk a little bit about Modern Horizons 2 and it's like launch and kind of the nuts and bolts of that. Yeah, it's a little different than normal. So, and we had, uh, I think Dieter wanted to hear us talk about it some. So, we're just going to go over the WPN release that came out. And then we're going to get into what we think the best thing to do in Historic is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say we called it. Yeah. And there are some people that are, uh, there's some high profile magic folk that disagree with us. We're going to see how this shakes out. I think we're going to be yeah. right. I'm 100% sure we're going to be right. All right, so if you want to uh, listen to this podcast and then tweet at us how right we are, you can get at us <laughs> at Casual Tripod. Yep, you can also hit us up on Facebook at Casual Tryhard MTG, or as usual, you can drop us an email at show at Casual Tryhard MTG dot com. We're going to talk a little bit about Time Spiral and a little bit about Modern Horizon. If there are singles you guys are looking to pick up, especially for Time Spiral, since should be out like right about when you guys are listening to this. Please use our TCG player affiliate link, tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com. Um, anything you purchase after following that link will get a small percentage of to help keep the show going. This weekend and next weekend, or, or through next week, will probably be pretty good times to pick up the old border time spiral cards. I think that a lot of them are priced a little high right now, but really high. Yeah, but they should come down once cards get in hands, and I think that they're going to kind of skyrocket from there, because from what I'm hearing, there's not very much of this product in general, and at one per pack, there's not a whole lot of these floating around out there, so any specific one's going to be kind of rare. Um, we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash casual tryhard MTG. If you guys want to contribute a little bit more directly, patrons get early access to our show notes. I usually post them up on Wednesdays, like the day before the show goes live. Uh, they also get ad- access to our pre-show ramblings, which today was almost an hour of us talking about who knows what. Um, I usually post that on Tuesdays. So patrons, make sure you go check that out. If any Anybody else wants to check it out, sign up for a Patreon. I don't care how much you pledge. It's anything you can afford to help keep the show going, we're going to appreciate. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, yep. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, Casual Tryhard MTG on YouTube. And I should have a Time Spiral box opening that has already gone live when you're listening to my voice right now. Ooh. Yep. So... Look I th- forward to that. I kind of hit the wall with this draft format. Yeah. In that, like, I just didn't want to devote the time to, like, record and, like, do more drafts. So yeah. I broke down and opened 136 packs. And we are uh, now transitioning into uh, the historic times, I think. Yeah. So some of, the de- some of the some of the decks we talk about today, I will probably play some versions of them. And Mm -hmm. record them. And I think what I'm going to do is less about, like, here's a finish list. Mm -hmm. And maybe, like, here's a list I'm starting with. And maybe, like, working through, like, things as they come up. As opposed to being like, this list is done. Let's play five games. Right. So. Yeah, I think you can learn a lot more that way. Yeah. So I'm going to go a little bit out of order here according to the show notes, but you were talking about hitting a wall and being done with uh, Kaldheim. Yes. Evidently, Strixhaven spoilers start next week. What? Yeah. The 25th, Strixhaven spoilers start. Dear God, it never stops. That's time it is already? (laughs) Like it's time for another set? I guess we're almost to April. Like, Yeah. yeah, it snuck up on me, but wow, okay. Yeah. You might only get a couple weeks of, uh, like, you might only get, like, one or two, like, historic videos before we uh, move on. But, like, the announcement, I think, is, like, next Thursday. So that should be, like, the first-ish day of spoilers. The first official day will probably be the Monday after that. Okay. And then two weeks, a week off pre-release. Yeah. Should be, like, the end of April, so... That crazy, crazy, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. 
Yep. Here it is. Yeah, like we're going to have time spiral. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, like they're going to start spoilers for the next set. Right. Yeah. Time spiral will be out like right now when you're listening to this. And then the following Thursday will be strict saving spoilers. I think 25th is Thursday, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Brian also came up with a good idea that we kind of want your help with. We were talking a little bit about historic anthologies last week. And Brian mentioned something a minute ago about some higher profile magic spokespeople, I guess. They're and their content thoughts creators. on historic. Yeah, content creators, sure. And uh, we had an idea, or you had an idea, to kind of make our own historical anthology. Yeah. So I was thinking, like, maybe you could build one, and I'll build one, and then I'll make a new Discord room. And I'll call it class participation. Oh, man. And anybody that wants to, we'll probably, I think we should limit it to like one per person. So we don't spend the whole episode going over cards. But if everybody wants to, you know, throw a card up in class participation, we can talk about how it might fit into the historic format. I thought that might be a fun show. Yeah. My initial thought was like, we were like bagging on historic anthologies and that's not super constructive. Right. And like one of the things we said last week was like, well, these cards don't move the needle and mm -hmm. don't do anything. So yep. like what cards could do something? Yeah. So and we're looking at cards that would like potentially spawn an archetype or strengthen like a tier three archetype. Yeah. Just to like change up the, the play of yeah. the format because the format has some pretty defined play patterns. Right. And so getting rid of, like, shaking that up would be good to give, like, a more varied experience. Mm -hmm. Now, the rules I came up with, mm -hmm. I think, are some of the rules that they might be using for historic anthologies. Yeah. Which is, well, some of them. Which is, right. one, the card shouldn't be pioneer legal, right? Uh, yes. Because we, yep. we want the historic format to feel different than pioneer. Yeah, we want it to be the legacy of Arena instead of just more pioneer. Right. Like you said, we should be trying to like make new archetypes and move the needle. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some stuff that they've already said, like, you're not getting right. They're not going to give us swords to plowshares or lightning bolt. Right. Right. And I guess like entomb and reanimate, they decided we're too good. Mm hmm. Right. But Blood no. Season Death Shadow, though, they're great. They're great. Those are <laughs> sweet power level. Phyrexian uh, Tower. Cool. Yep. Awesome. So, I don't know, man. If they were going to put Death Shadow in here, I think Swords would have been fine. There's clearly no like design philosophy here. I, yeah. <laughs> so I was watching bef right before we started recording. Like I had tweeted this video out where a PK bags on the uh, historic anthologies pretty hard, and he yeah. was like, "I feel like the cards that they put on are cards that they programmed in for other reasons and then cut." Oh, right. could be. Could right. very like, well be. Hey, these like random uh, Amonkhet cards mm -hmm. were supposed to be an Amonkhet remastered, but we cut them at the last minute and they're yeah. on the client and right. we're not getting so any money for them. So here and hey, here are these random draft cards that like maybe we're supposed to be in a version of like Arena Cube. Yeah. And then they cut them. Yeah. Or they want them in the Arena Cube. Oh yeah, so spider now, spawning would be super. That like, see now that makes sense because yeah. that's only ever a limited card. Yeah. So like, hey, here are these cards we want to put in the arena cube. Yeah. But we're not gonna just put them on the arena cube. We're gonna sell them to you first. Yeah. And so here, and I was like, well, that's an interesting thought that like these are cards they were putting on anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, well, you know, then this is my thought is they're like, oh well, we don't want it to be totally useless. Here's Inspiring Statuary that we cut from Kaladesh Remastered Nordash. at the last minute. Yeah. And here's Death Shadow because we have to give you guys something. <laughs> there has to be some reason for you to spend money on this. Yeah. So I was like, that's yeah. interesting. Like, I hadn't thought that they were they like, one of these for other things on Arena. Yeah. And so they that's were like, we'll sell them to them. So 
Yeah. Hmm. So just bagging on it and saying that it's duty is one thing, yeah. but to be like, I don't know, come up with like a reasonable list and then, I don't know, I can tweet some people at a, at a Magic Arena. We'll get some things moving here. We'll be like, hey. Yeah. We here, should totally share our Here list. are these like 10 cards and here's what they do for your f- stupid format. Yeah. So how about you try that? <laughs> try these yeah. on. I think it's a I think it's a fun idea for a show yeah. as long as we can get people to cooperate with us. Yes, I'm sure we can get some people. Yeah. So pick a card, one that's not already pioneer legal, something that's going to move the needle, change the format, spawn an archetype, whatever. Yeah. And uh you can include a blurb if you want to, some of your reasonings behind it and we'll go over them on the show next week. Yeah, that's how um, you get it. We record Monday nights. So w- when I make the room, I'll put a thing in there that says make sure you're in by i guess monday at like six yeah as long as you're in before monday at six we'll talk about it yes all right so this first main topic is kind of more your area of expertise which is kind of the rollout of modern horizons 2 yeah it's a little bit different than we're used to and I think I'm kind of uniquely qualified to talk about this in a way that not a lot of other podcast hosts are, um, just because I'm so tight with like our LGS owner. Like we talk business stuff all the time. And I know Dieter uh, works at an LGS and had asked that we went over some of this stuff on Discord. So I figured I'd oblige. WPN is the like, I don't want to call it a governing body, but it's like Wizards of the Coast's like the portion of the company that interacts with local game stores and sanctions tournaments and does product distribution and that kind of stuff. They handle all that. I actually don't know how often they come out. I know they come out at least once per set, but they have like regular emails that go out and talk about upcoming releases and changes to product allocation, blah, 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 a whole bunch of boring stuff. But one came out uh, just a few days ago for Modern Horizons 2. And some of the things are a little bit different than what we're used to. One of the first things that this, you know, email said was that Wizards Event Reporter is being decommissioned on the 23rd. Which is like no notice. It's not no notice. Stores haven't been able to run events anyway. So it's not like this change is like going to be noticed right away. Yeah. Yeah. And they Wizards did start kind of pushing the companion app, which I believe is going to be the replacement for Wizards Event Reporter. For the last couple pre-releases, um, stores were kind of being pressured, I guess is the right word, into running at-home pre-releases through the companion app. I'm almost positive that's what's supposed to be replacing Wizards Event Reporter. Like the only upside to Wizards Event, well, there's two, I guess there's two upsides to Wizards Event Reporter. Number one is it was linked to your DCI number and Planeswalker points. Which they murdered. Which they murdered. So there's none of that anymore, which kind of eliminates the need for Wizards Event Reporter. But Wizards Event Reporter also let you run bigger events. I think currently the companion app only does like eight or 12 people in an event. It might even just be eight people in an event, which is going to make it awkward if, you know, you show up to draft at your LGS and 10 people show up to draft. And now you don't have Wizards Event Reporter and you can't use a companion app because you have too, too many people. Yeah, this seems like something they should fix, but they should have fixed all the problems with Wurr and Walter for like seven years. Yeah, that's like a whole nother can of worms. I can't imagine that they're going to keep Walter around if they got rid of Wur, because as far as I know, Walter's kind of built on top of Wur, and Walter was way worse than Wizards Event Reporter ever was. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've been to two GPs where Walter crashed. Yes, minimum. Yeah unacceptable (laughs) yes like you know 700 person tournament ground to a halt and they're giving away product gp charlotte was 1200 people i think yeah i just downloaded and signed into the magic companion app Mm -hmm. because i had did not have it until just now yep 
Yeah, I downloaded it a while ago just to check it out, and I think I ran like a just a fake event with Anthony once just to see how like it how it worked. Yeah, but it's awkward if you can only run eight man events. Yeah, like so that. I'm that not sure what that's going to be. My hope, and this is a huge like ask for wizards, is that they realize that like they at least have to have something at store level that can run a 64 person event right or something and they get to that kind of functionality because like you could in theory right if you had a really big pre-release break it into like two 64 person tournaments yeah right and like it might be awkward on the store owner front to have two events running Mm -hmm. but like that's functional but you can't like have you know, you can't break 128 person pre-release into eight man pods, though. Of 16 uh, simultaneous events, like no, yeah, that can't work. Yeah. So hopefully, well, they, I like, mean, that's kind it. of the nice part about the companion app, though, because you don't have to. What do you mean? Like, you report on the app. Oh. Like once once the event's set up, the tournament organizer doesn't have to do anything except hand prizes out when he's done. Oh, so it like handles the it does the pairings for you and stuff. Yeah, it pushes the pairings to your phone, and you do uh, like both players have to report. I think. So and, like so, you could in theory do sixteen set up sixteen. Yeah, tournaments. tournaments you just do them on the fly, and just yeah, that would still be like weird though. Yeah, but I mean that does do something we've talked about before: the push to casual. Right, yeah. like that is an event that is like made to be like, oh, you went three zero. Here's three packs. Right, right. As opposed to, oh, you went like ten and zero. Here's like a case. Right. Yeah. Here's two boxes. Yeah. Here's and two an bo- invitation. <laughs> yeah, for for your troubles. So yeah. so that'll be interesting. It yep. would be weird. Like go to like, there has to be something else for GPS, right? Yeah. Or like the companion app gets you into like, I don't know, a bigger par- portion of the matrix to yeah, like it figure be. it out. Yeah. Uh, that's totally something that they could do is just have like another portion of the companion app for large events. That's like, you know, obviously not run on your phone. Although reporting would be weird for an event with, you know, $25,000 on the line, like re- reporting your own, like I on, on your phone. Well, I, don't I mean, know. how different is it than a than a slip? Well, because you sign the slip in front of your opponent. Well, I I it's would not have, like you're touching your opponent's phone to report. I, I would I don't know I would assume that like you know you report that you win and then there's yeah. like a push to your opponent's phone that they oh, have and then to they confirm. It. Yeah, maybe. Right now, you know, so you would just be like, yeah, I won. And then they just they just have to approve the whoever reports first. The other person has to approve the result. Like that would be hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that it's probably a good way of doing it. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you, Mark Rosewater. Please call. Uh, I can <laughs> I don't consult for free. Um, yeah, yeah. Pay me. Like we are going to when we go back in store, we are definitely going to have a different experience. Oh yeah, it's going to be before. way different than it was. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be anything the same. Pushing the companion app, then they forgot to launch the companion app slash didn't <laughs> have it ready. And yeah. I think that the fact that they shut down all in-store play for almost an entire year yes, has given them the time to like, this is just like a hard reset. And they're like, okay, we can force compliance by taking this away. And this yeah. being the only thing that you can do. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it is at least tied to the same email address on your arena account. It is. So um, you need to remember I'm your sure arena login. I'm sure that there are cool things you can do there, but I, I don't know what it is. Like win an avatar in a paper event or something. That would be, you know, reasonable. Yeah. Or like have additional prizes that are like arena packs or a arena open token or something like if you win uh win an fnm get an arena arena open token that'd be kind of cool yeah so uh it does have the like most annoying thing that anything 
any magic app has. Life counter. Which, life counter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, really, wizards? Like, like this is your big thing? Okay. It's so, a commander, man. Yeah. Oh, you can pick the type of event. Oh you yeah, can, yeah. Yeah. So it's like standard, vintage, legacy, modern, blah 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 blah. Commander's like all of these start at twenty. Why are you giving me all these options? <laughs> it should just be not a commander game, commander game. Right. So the uh, like the, the one cool thing about the companion app, well, one of the cool things about it is you can run your own events. Okay. So you don't have to be tied to something your LGS is running. Like if you and some buddies want to chip in for a booster box and draft it, like you don't, the store owner doesn't have to put anything in the computer. Gotcha. Like you can fight your own app, start a tournament, log people into it and go. Um, and it'll do pairings and everything else right for you. The tournament organizer can also set up an event and push it to your phone, which you can then approve to like enter into a tournament that way also. Gotcha. And I think that there's a code, like when the TO starts an event, there's a code that comes up where you can like put it in your companion app to enter you into that tournament. Gotcha. So, okay, there's I, there's I some stuff. Yep. Uh, but that wasn't about Modern Horizons 2. It wasn't. <laughs> it was just in the, in, the, in the thing. Okay. Yeah, it was just in the announcement. So, Modern Horizons 2 is going to be the first like supplemental ish product to have a pre-release. So battle bond and commander legends and whatever didn't have like true pre-releases. There was like pre-release events where you could get product and play, but modern horizons two is actually going to have pre-release kits. Okay. Super weird. Yeah, like are um, they gonna are they gonna be like you know with a foil pre release card kind of yep. deal? Six packs and a promo. Yep. Okay. I don't know how many of our listeners care about this kind of stuff, but I thought it was strange that in this announcement it said that the allocation for these pre release kits is going to be based on previous pre release attendance, but reduced. So just to make it a little bit more exclusive. I'm not sure because like the very next sentence, it also says that it's going to be increased for premium stores. Mm. So I'm a little nervous that they're trying to phase out like non-premium the smaller LGSs and only be in, you know, your, your big stores. Which I mean, the problem is, is there aren't that many of those. Right. Like I guess our nearest premium store is Cape Fear. Yeah, I don't I don't think that any of the Charleston stores are premium. Yeah, what about Columbia? I mean it wouldn't surprise me if Firefly was, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't either. Yeah. It, well, they have to be premium because they were holding um PTQs. Uh, oh yeah. So so yeah, like it's like a an hour to three hour drive depending on where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not driving three hours for a pre release, sorry. No. No, sorry, yeah. Which again is another thing where they're just kind of squeezing the smaller, the smaller yeah. stores. And I mean, we kind of talked about that a little bit last week, also. Like in in my rant, was that last week? That was last week, right? Um, week before, week before, two weeks ago, was that Wizards had said that they were moving away or looking for alternate means. Was is that how they worded it? Yeah, they were, they were trying to like expand into direct customer sales. Yeah, they they were trying to move away from yeah um, and, and it, and it makes sense if you basically consolidate your like in like store sales to these kind of like like hubs. Yeah, and then to everyone who's not like in a hub, right? You just sell them cards directly, right? Which like then it's like. Well, where do I play? Do I have to drive like an hour and a half to like play Friday Night Magic? Because that's not going to oh, happen. Didn't you hear? Eighty percent of players are play just at their kitchen table. I guess I've never met any of these players yeah, because they never either. left their kitchens. <laughs> but like, I I don't know. Like I, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, if that's their like logic, but like. How do you find the kitchen? How do you find the other person playing goldfishing at their kitchen table? 
Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have never met you if it wasn't for our LGS. Yeah, like, I mean, like, we would live a mile and a half from each other, each gold fishing. Right. <laughs> without being able to. Pl- <laughs> like, it doesn't. Whatever. I, I clearly yeah. don't understand, like, their calculus. Yep. Because, uh, like, I want to play the game and be good at it. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and I just don't want to, like, I don't know play make merit lages while you're watching a stream yeah exactly like ooh, this would have been really good against his hand and he didn't know what i was doing right <laughs> uh okay so uh yep. the end the end times may be upon the local game store <laughs> and then um, um yeah so uh booster boxes for this again a change from how we're used to recently since war of the spark i guess only at WPN premium stores can you pick up your booster box at pre-release. Okay. Like since I'm pretty sure it was war of the spark since war of the spark wizards has said anybody that pre-orders a box, you can pick it up at pre-release. Yeah. Not so now, unless your LGS happens to be a premium store. Awesome. Yep. And I didn't have this in the notes, but they also said that they are, only shipping prize support for pre-releases for pre-release. And then like the rest of what a store orders would come in the next week, which is different from how it's always been. Which they're, um, they're trying to make sure that they can give that advantage to the WPN stores. Yeah. The premium stores. Yeah. yeah. Which stinks, but yeah, I guess that's their decision to make. Another thing that's strange about modern horizons too is it will be the first supplementary product to have the full suite of booster packs. So Modern Horizons 2 will have set boosters and collector's boosters, as well as draft boosters and pre-release kits. Okay. So this is going to be kind of expensive, right? Kind of? Yeah. So like a booster pack of Modern Horizons was like between eight, eight bucks, eight, 12 bucks, somewhere in there. Eight ten bucks. Yeah, like around eight to ten dollars. Not so much that we weren't willing to punish ourselves for losing at other pre-releases by buying <laughs> Modern Horizons packs. Right. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they were cheaper than like a Masters pack. Yeah, they weren't too too but bad. But more expensive than a normal booster pack. I think like so, eight dollars was about right. Yeah. So is this pre-release going to be fifty bucks, sixty bucks? Probably somewhere in that neighborhood. Like. To the point where I would do one, maybe two of the opportunity. Two. Yeah. Right. Like, it also depends on like what price support is, right? Yeah. Right. Like, if I go three zero and you give me like two packs, I'm gonna be like, do I want to spend another For fifty, 50 bucks? bucks? Yeah. To win like two packs, like, uh, yeah. Probably I don't know. Not. I mean, now Modern Horizons, like you know, was a good limited in draft environment. Like, it really was. So if it's if it's good again, maybe I would, but it seems unlikely that I'm going to be plunking down like, you know, two hundred dollars on a weekend, right? For twenty four packs. Now the upside of all of these different packs is we have found that having collector boosters makes stuff way cheaper than it should be. See my yes. puzzle piece thought seizes that are foil and only twenty five dollars. Wow, they've come down that far? Yes, I almost bought some like a couple weeks ago. They were $25. Like, that can't be right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got them for 50 stonks and yeah. uh, was like, oh man, I got, I'm got i like stealing these. And now they're like right. 25 And I'm like, oh God, I did not steal these. That's a, I think that's a topic for a different show. Yeah. But, but like with, with all of, head. yeah, with all of these different boosters, Hopefully, we don't end up with some of the problems from the original Modern Horizons. Yeah. Where there's like a few cards that are just stupid expensive. Yeah. And price people out of Modern with different cards. Yeah. So, Pruly should be 50, 60 bucks, I'm thinking. Just a rough guess. Yeah. That boosters, like 12 bucks? Probably somewhere in there. And then collector boosters like forty bucks. Um, I mean, 
Depends on the treatment, right? Like, think about what they did with Double Masters. Yeah. They were 100 bucks a pop? Well, kind of. Like, I mean, that that was a lot more than a collector booster, though. Yeah. Like, but there were f- 50 cards in one of those packs, right? There were 50? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I could see, like, 40 to $50 for a collector's booster seems probably in the right range. Yeah. Also, don't forget that they said that they're reprinting enemy fetches in this set. Yeah. So those enemy fetches out of those collector boosters are going to be very expensive. They will. Yes. Yeah. We say that, but like the high end fancy version, like there mm-hmm. are so many of them now. Do you want the That's Zendikar true. expeditions? Do you yeah. want the other Zendikar expeditions? <laughs> right. Like you can yeah. only print so many full art foil versions of these lands yeah before nobody cares anymore yeah before it's just like oh okay cool yeah that's true so and then there's this other thing that came up in this and in the like magic like player survey Mm -hmm. which is spell table yeah what's spell table i don't know Um, I know what it is. I've never used it. I've never downloaded it. I've never done anything other than read what it actually is. So Wizard said that basically LGSs have to register for Modern Horizons 2 pre-releases or they won't be eligible for pre-releases. Any pre-releases? Yeah. Um, Wow, I'm putting people over a barrel. Yeah, I'm almost positive that I read that in there. I, I don't have it pulled up right in front of me, and it's not in my notes. So I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that I read that. And then they also said that you can't run pre-releases. So all pre-releases have to be run digitally and that they suggest using spell table. So that seems like Wizards is taking an awful stance, like pushing spell table. Yeah. Like, did Wizards buy Spell Table or something? I don't, is Spell Table like a way to like stream, like to like broadcast yeah, it's, magic? It's like webcam magic. Okay, so so it's a it's like it's an app that you can use to like play webcam magic against somebody. Else. So let's you know run an experiment or a thought experiment. You're Wizards of the Coast. Mm-hmm. For the last year, no one's been able to play your game in person. Right. It makes sense that you want to make sure that never happens again. Right. So let's get the spell table thing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe all these people that never leave their kitchen table never Uh, have to leave their kitchen table. Yeah. Because imagine a situation where it's not like discord or some like random garbage that -hmm. like the spell table app. You're like, I want to play legacy. Yeah. And it just pairs you with someone. Oh, maybe. And then you've got yourself set up, they've got themselves set up, and you play Legacy. Huh. Right? Like, now, this is kind of sketch on the, hey, we want want to, in air quote, support Magic Online for this. Yeah. But this could give a way for people that are buying their cards at Walmarts and Targets. Mm Mm-hmm where they, you know, have murdered their LGS, a way to, like, still get games with the physical cards that they like to buy for reasons that might be ancillary to actually playing. Actually, actually, like, yeah, like, I like to collect these things, and I like the art, and it's cool that I get to play with them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And this could increase the play with them sometimes quotient. Yeah. I don't actually know if Spell Table has any sort of matchmaking or even like rooms where you can go to to look for a match. I have no idea. Neither I don't know if you have to set up your match somewhere else and then go to Spell Table to play it. I I really don't know anything about the program. I mean, again, my my consulting is not free, but like, have you heard of? Oh gosh, uh, what is it called? Is it not? Is it Omegle? I think it's Omegle. I don't know. Have you heard of Chat Roulette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 
Oh, um, I think Omegle is. I think that's the right name. I might be messing it okay. up with something else. Is something similar where you just go on and you just hit like a button and yeah. you like get someone that you're chatting with. Mm-hmm. And you can also apparently set up like a group where you put like seventy or eighty or a hundred people in a group. I listen to a podcast that sometimes when they want to talk to listeners, they'll go into this. And just mm-hmm. randomly like pair with people, and like people from the yeah. po- fans will like pair through as well. That's so like if cool. you could do that, like it wouldn't be hard to like build like a legacy room, click, yeah. and then you get like paired against someone. Yeah. Right. And like you know, no tracking or anything, and maybe you play a game and you're like, you're a dick. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> and you go away, and you're like, block this idiot, and you go find someone else. Yeah. Right. Or you play with a person once. You're like, well, that was fun. And then you play like seven more games. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but it might be something where they're just trying to figure out ways more and more ways to detether themselves from the LGS. Yeah, I think so. Which, you know, I don't think we can put this on Wizards of the Coast. You know, like the Mark Rosewaters of the world. Mm-hmm. I'm sure aren't sitting in like a back room trying to figure out how to like kill your LGS. Yeah. This is people like above them that we don't know about. Oh yeah. That, this that is are... like CEOs and shareholders and whatever. Yeah. It's people that have never like played magic. Right. And don't kind of understand the like sense of community that you get. And like, yeah. you know, the, the friendships that are made and like, that's why people keep playing magic. Yeah, I was actually just talking with Anthony the other day about this because uh, he had somebody in the store, like an older person that didn't really know what a game store was, and they just couldn't wrap their brain around like how it worked. Like they were asking all the right questions, and he was trying to explain to them, you know, people buy games and they sit down and play, and you know, we have card games and people collect them and we hold tournaments, and they just couldn't wrap their head around like going somewhere and being social that wasn't a bar. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand that because, I mean, that's how a lot of people are social. Right. Right. And, like, I don't drink. So, like, the idea of, like, me going to a bar to be social, I'll do it. But it's kind of like, eh. No, I mean, I do drink and I don't go to bars. (laughs) Yeah. So, like, some people, that's, like, not appealing, but they've not, like, had the alternative. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... I can see, but, like, it seems like it's people that haven't played the game or might, like, you know, like, went to the Harvard Business School, got an MBA, and are really good at counting beans. (laughs) And just have never been in that world. Mm Mm-hmm. And they like they're like we sell widgets, must sell more widgets, sell widgets yep. directly to people, cut out middleman, make more money on widgets. And right. someone's like, yo, the middleman is why people buy the widgets. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. no, sell more widgets. No, you need to give them a place to use the widgets. Spell table. They don't want to leave their kitchens anyway. They're nerds. Yeah. It's like no, yeah. So that is the that is weird. Like I am almost zero percent to buy a webcam set up some like (laughs) jank webcam setup download spell table and be running that and then go to the lgs and buy a pre-release kit so that i could sit alone upstairs (laughs) and like build a pool and build a pool and then play against like rando right or like there has to be some sort of something right because if they want you to run your pre-release like i have to be able to pair i have to be able to play you if they're like you can do that through the companion app yeah but then i have to find you on spell table yeah i mean like i said i I don't know so i don't know if there's like a matchmaking thing built into spell table or if it's you know you need user ids i really don't I mean, if it's Wizards, it's probably going to be like Greasy cho- Jockey, number sign, 7821344. Just like <laughs> Arena. It's like, oh, this is unintelligible yeah. garbage? Thank you. Right. Um, all right. So, anything else? Well, 
Anything else about the release before we talk about my thoughts on Modern Horizons real quick? No, I think that like the release stuff, I think that was the gist of it. Okay. It it's just strange how differently they're handling this compared to like what a normal pre release looks like and also what a release of a supplemental product looks like. I mean, we are going to have to definitely update our like playing in paper stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was hoping we were going to be able to do our playing in paper like leading into getting back into stores. But I don't even think that's possible because I, I really don't know like what it's going to look like when we get back into stores. Maybe we should give ourselves homework that we like figure out what spell table is and like figure out how to yeah. use it. Yeah, and the companion app. <laughs> yeah, like I had the companion app, but like just like maybe we could figure out how spell table works and be like, hey, here's how you use spell table. Here's how you can yeah. play against people. Actually, that's a pretty good idea because we had somebody in Discord that, uh, wanted to see us play each other in like modern and legacy with paper cards. So oh. maybe we could figure out how to do oh, that man, on they, spell they table. Want, they want some like uh, all foil depths porn. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Da- Daddy's got a car in a box. He hasn't got to take out in a while. So yeah, let's go. Let's go. Sweet depths on depths action. I'll put something else together. I'll play. Like, I, I'm, I'll play oops or. Uh, I, could, I don't have any legacy decks together. I mean, I could put. Like Loam or yeah, I have Delver or whatever. Depths. I think I have Show and Tell together, maybe. But like yeah. you guys, you guys wouldn't want to see. You guys would want to see me play uh, Tin Fins. <laughs> Talk about a degenerate deck. Yeah, there we go. I don't even Tin Fins is good anymore. But yeah, <laughs> Tin Fins was ever good. Hey, I finished thirty fourth, just out of cash in like a hundred and twenty person event, just behind Reed Duke. So, <laughs> all right. So my, so we have all this like structural stuff with Modern Horizons yeah. too. My concern is like looking at the last two years of cards since Modern Horizons. Yeah. Right. Like, like I just went and like looked at a bunch of bands. Like I just went through the timeline of bands since Modern mm-hmm. Horizons. And there are two cards that died for the sins of Modern Horizons, which were Bridge from Below and Moxiopole. Like, that yep. weren't in the set, but were banned because of the set. Yep. Plus then, like, Astrolabe and Hogak in Modern and Ren and Six in Legacy. In Legacy. And just, like, how for, like, large portions, like, you know... Two months doesn't feel like a long time, but like if you're gonna be able to play like like two or three, let's say, um PTQs or like big events mm-hmm. and it happens to fall in the two month span right where like everything is just awful. Like mm-hmm. that could be like your whole competitive magic year. Right. Right? Like, oh hey, there's a modern GP within three hours of me. And there's this PTQ that's relatively close. And it's just like, oh, Modern's busted. Like, this was my whole year of big events was Right. Broken. These two formats that are awful. Yeah. So that can, like, that can just, like, sour people. Mm-hmm. And I already brought this up a little earlier. Like, think about, like, the cards that kind of price people out of Modern. Yeah. That, like... So, like, uh, Force of Negation, you said it was, like, $100? Yeah. Right? Like, yep. so if you want to play a blue deck, you have to play some number of Force of Negation. I said, at the very least, you're going to have some in your sideboard. So, like, you get priced out of Modern with these with these cards now. Mm-hmm. And they're finding their way back to, like, Legacy and stuff. Right. So, like, the cards that have found their way back to Legacy have just kind of, like, shot up in price. And it didn't fix the, like, oh, hey, Modern's too expensive. Like... Was right. it Prismatic Vista? Yeah. Remember you and you're like, oh, this will be a cheap to be solution cheap. to cheap solution yeah. to fetch lands, and they're like thirty five or forty dollars. Uh, they're so expensive that I own none because I didn't buy any. I have four, yep. and we're done. I'm like, yep, cool, four. I'm done. But yeah, I got them like relatively cheap, but they went up to like forty dollars, and it's like this is not yeah. reasonable. I just worry that like to compete with the cards that have been printed in like Throne of Eldraine forward mm-hmm. they've got to be really good right? yeah i mean that's a scary thought 
they banned field, right? I've lost track. Uh, yes. Yep. Right. I think I'm pretty sure they did. But when they're designing this set, what's going on? Field of the Dead, Oko, Uro, yeah. like all this. Something that's better than all that. Yeah, like, oh, we've got to like put cards that compete with these in Legacy. And it's like, uh. Right. Or like even like, you know, Urza. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, need to, we need to compete with Urza. We need the green Urza. Like, oh, God. Oh, boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, yeah. they just have to push so hard to like make an impact. Is that Freilies? Is that the green Urza? I guess it could be Freilies. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know, we already used Sarah for, mm-hmm. like, unbeatable limited card, unplayable stand- uh, unplayable constructive <laughs> card. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. So that's my concern. Valid concern. Yes. All right. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was I've played a reasonable amount of historic um since the historic anthologies came out Mm -hmm. and i stand behind the fact that we said it basically had two cards in it maybe three yep and i've only seen two cards so you've seen i'm assuming inspiring statuary i have not seen inspiring statuary okay i played against that that deck is busted yeah i'm kind of surprised that's not where you started I just haven't got there. Like I was playing the other card I thought was in the set, which was Death Shadow. Yeah. But I played against one. It's so much better than the standard deck. Like yeah. Witching Well. Oh yeah. And Emery. Yeah. And you can just improvise out a Karn. Nice. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. Like I'm getting clowned. Now <laughs> I mean, Granted, you could also improvise out an Ugin, right? Yeah. Well, now, in my defense, they did, I think, blind top deck a uh, uh, paradoxical outcome and proceed yeah. to draw six cards after I had them empty-handed. Mm. So, in my thought sees deck. So, I was not doing real well when they drew seven <laughs> cards. But right. that seemed really good. So, what's the other card that you saw? Uh, Cold Steel Heart. Okay. I've not seen a Cold Steel Heart in play. Uh, I played I, did... it, I played a couple times against the Paradox Engine deck. Okay, yeah, that's that, that fits really well in there. Yep. Oh, I've also I take that back. I've seen um, I played against two Merit Lady Slumber decks also. Oh, that were running Cold Steel Heart. Okay, I I I also played one match against the stupid one one Trample Goblin and oh, yeah. <laughs> and Bone Splitter. Ooh. Yeah. And they, they played the stupid goblin. Then they yeah. played the 1-1 one, one warrior that gives all your equipped warriors double strike. Yep. Yep. I killed all that stuff. Then they uh, played in the Heary and they put a bone splitter on the thing that they played, uh, the, mm-hmm. the token they made, and I just couldn't beat the Nahiri. But we really think that Death Shadow is kind of where it's at in the format. Yeah, like... The way that I see it is Thought Seize was already the best card in Historic. Yes. And Death Shadow, I mean, is a legacy deck and a modern deck and is probably the best shell for Thought Seize. Yeah. The thing that really makes, uh, that holds Death Shadow back in the format is the lack of fetch lands. But, like, yeah. that's not... That probably limits you from being a three-color shadow deck. Mm -hmm. But you can be two-color shadow decks. Yeah, I mean, you can be two-color shadow decks very easily. And in the little bit that I was playing, I could certainly see, you know, maybe not a full third color, but you could get away with a splash for a card for sure. Yeah, where, you know, single pip, because a lot of the cards you end up playing are single pips. Yeah. So it's not like you have huge color requirements mm-hmm. where you couldn't like splash, you know, a you know, an on grass rampage or right. you know some red cards to like kind of like tie everything together and like shore up a a whole like an abrade or something. Yeah. Right. So the format is it has the aggressive slant, but I feel like best of three is more mid rangey. Yeah, it's definitely mid-range. Yeah, I haven't played any best of one. 
played best of three. So I've played a lot of best of one. Yeah. And basically I played against death, Sh- some version of the death shadow mirror, mm-hmm. like almost half the games I played. I yeah. played like 10 or 12 games. And I think like four to six of them were death shadow mirrors. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to kind of go through and talk about like kind of all the different flavors of death shadow you can put together. Yeah, like Beskin Robbins, 39 flavors. Yeah, I don't think we got quite to 39 flavors of it, but we got a few. Yep. So this first one you had up here. Yeah, just mono black. Yeah. Mm, Nothing fancy, just kind of the mono black aggro deck. You can do enough damage to yourself where like, you just play all the shocks that have black in them, and it doesn't really matter. Um, You also get the... Kessel. I mean, the, like these cards kind of go for like all of the versions. Kessel, Lockthwain is really good. Like you don't think twice about hitting yourself for five to draw a card where oh, yeah. normally you would definitely think twice about hitting yourself for five to draw a card. And the Agadim's Awakening is another good one for, you know, just dome in yourself to get an early shadow in play. Yeah. Um, but the deck plays really decently. I only played like a game or two with a mono black version because I felt like you could do more by just adding a color. Yeah. So I didn't play a ton with it, but a lot of the early lists that I saw were mono black. Like yes. the ones that I saw posted online. So I think that you can like your, your like death shadow starter kit mm-hmm. is four shadows, four thought seas, four Agadim's awakening and at least two castles. Yeah. Like if, um, you're, if you're mono black, you can probably just do four. Yeah. But if you're two colors to like make the rest of your mana work, you don't have enough swamps. Right. So like probably um, two. Another card that I've seen in almost every list, although I have to say I'm not playing it in my list, is um, Knight of the Ebon Legion because it rewards you for enabling Death Shadow. Yeah, I played I played it in the, I was playing a black white version that Brian Gottlieb had yeah. tweeted out. And I think that list is a good place to start. I don't think it's perfect. But, yeah. like, Knight of the Ebon Legion was pretty good in it. Mm-hmm. So, yep. black-white is what I played. Mm-hmm. So, I think the biggest get in black-white is a Danto Vanguard. Yeah, definitely. Right? Like, the shock myself, thought sees you, turn to a Danto's Vanguard, and either just pay four. Right. Or attack the following turn and pay for mm-hmm. then you get to play your shadow on three plus have interaction up right the other cards uh ranger of eos which a card that's randomly in jumpstart that we had no idea was really in the format was it in jumpstart or was it in a uh anthology anthology i don't know because it's it's got a shard set symbol on it okay it might have been in the anthologies then yeah i had no idea it was even in the format so it's its biggest drawback is it's four mana but it's four yeah, mana, three, two. Search your deck for up to two, one casting cost uh, creatures. Right. So unless you get two death shadows, if that's the right thing to do, mm-hmm. it lets you, uh, Brian Gottlieb's list played one giant killer and mm-hmm. one fairy guide mother. Yeah. Because they're one cost creatures that have a spell attached to them. Yeah, so you can get either protection or a kill spell. It's a kill spell or jump. Oh, it's flying? Yeah, okay. one one white, give plus one, plus one, and flying. Yep. The other things you can get that I haven't seen anyone play, but I think are worth thinking about, are as, uh, Dire Tactics, the instant one in a uh, white, black, kill a creature, mm-hmm. take damage equal to its toughness. Yep. And then a Final Payment, which is... You either sack a creature, sack an enchantment, or pay five life to mm-hmm. destroy a creature. And it's again, it's white black. Yep. You have here God's Willing, which I've not seen someone play, but that seems like a spicy meatball. I, I had it in my. So I played a white black list for a little bit also. Um, I was not playing Ranger of Eos. I like the list that Brand Gottlieb was on was on four. I definitely don't think that's right. Having played it, like you want to draw exactly one on like turn seven. Right. And you don't want it any earlier because like there's not enough lands. You don't consistently get to four. Yeah. But I was on 
some mix of final payment, dire tactics, and God's willing. Yeah, and then um, there's also Kaya's onslaught, the double strike spell, right? Which just yep. like kind of takes the team team or battle rage spot. Kind of, sorta. It doesn't give trample, but if you were to combine it with God's willing, that you can get some evasion out of it that way. Yeah, and also like you know, this is something where like if you foretell it, mm-hmm. game one, and you use it, and you kill your opponent. Yeah. They just have to block every single time you attack the rest of the match. Yeah, and I mean, at that point, you can board it out, too. Yeah, like, they just, like, if you have three mana up, they just have to assume you have it. Right, and or if, if you, you have a car in Fort Bell or whatever. Yeah, like, this is where you, like, you would play, like, a Poison the Cup. Yeah. Just for the mind games of, you have to block this. Right. Because you're at 18, and this is a 9-9. And you're dead <laughs> if you don't. Yep. And they're just like, oh man, I guess every creature I cast has to just kill, be killed by this death shadow for the rest of the game. Yep, your one mana turned into an abyss. Yeah. I think it has, this has promise. The white mm-hmm. cards that you pay life are good. You also get access to like some reasonable sideboard plans. So one of the things that I noticed playing the white black version was... I don't know if final payment and dire tactics are good enough. They might not. Like one, one of them's a sorcery, right? Or are they both sorceries? Uh, I thought dire. I thought dire tactics was an instant. I could be wrong though. At, I know at least one of them's a source. Like black already has pretty good removal. I know you want to be paying some amount of life, but I think like five life all at once, a lot of times is gonna like stop you from casting the spell to remove a blocker. And they're not very, like, universal. Like, if I'm paying that big a cost and stretching into a second color and potentially, you know, playing at sorcery speed instead of instant speed, I need it to do more than just, like, kill a creature. Like, they're, it needs to... Oh, they're both instants. They're, bo- oh, they're both instants? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I, I want it to hit more than just creatures. Like, yeah. I want it to be able to take care of some other permanent type, I think. Yeah, like, feed, feed the swarm... Like, yeah. it's a sorcery, but it gets enchantments. So it yeah. has a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, yeah or like, like um, uh, what's his, what's his name? Murderous Rider? Murderous Rider, yeah. Like, it's only two life, but it lets you tag Planeswalkers. Yeah. Like, I think a Danto Vanguard is the big get. It gives you oh, another yeah. way yep. to be aggressive. That's the reason to be white. That's, yeah. It gives you another way to be aggressive. And like I said, I think, yeah. like, two rangers of eos because there were definitely mm-hmm. times where like that was the only card i wanted to draw mm-hmm. whereas like i just need a ranger and like i get two death shadows and i win they're also like the deck as as i was playing it from the brian gottlieb list like was light on lands because it's all ones and then there's randomly right. this four drop and yeah. so like there were times where like you would draw two and be stuck on three lands and just like well i can never never do this and there were also times it's like i'm playing a three two for a four right. and i'm just gonna die because i'm playing a three two for four yes right. it draws me two cards but it's still a three two for four mm-hmm. another thing uh that i was doing is in the removal suite like i think people have a healthy love of fatal push yeah but without uh, fetch lands fatal yeah. push is like one mana kill a two drop mm-hmm. which is good. Yeah, i mean that's fine in a sea of death shadows it is i uh the list i started playing had a uh, just four fatal pushes i mm-hmm. did a two two split of fatal push and uh blood cheese thirst yeah just for the the off chance that i get to four mana yeah. being able to do more yeah, the white black list that I played had a split between Fatal Push, Blood Chief's Thirst, the white black ones, and I think I had one Heartless Act. Yeah. Or Feed, feed the Swarm. Feed the yeah. Swarm. You just need, like, I had an opponent play an Ugin, and I just was like, fine, you paid eight mana to deal with me three. Right. I'll pay four mana and kill it. Mm-hmm. And then they cast another one, and <laughs> I did it again, and then they cast another one, and I lost. But. Yeah. But having the the flexibility to be able to 
go a little bit up in mana yeah to get to get the the bigger things i think is good because like fatal push only ever gets two drops in this format right like you don't have a way to like make it be better yeah so then you have here black red yeah so i didn't really i haven't really seen too many people playing like a black red version but this is the version that i played the most and I also didn't start from scratch. Um, I basically took the Pyromancer Arcanist shell and slotted in Death Shadows. Yeah. Um, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It's awesome. I Claim to fame is awesome with Death Shadow. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. When you just play your Death Shadow and then you give it haste and they die. Yes, they just die. Or you have three mana and you get back a Death Shadow, give it haste and they die. Yeah, yeah, uh, th- yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah but just like, buy it back and kill them. Yeah. So, did, what did you cut? Did you cut the citrus suppliers? Um, I don't have my list in front of me. The last list that I played actually was on two scourge of skyclaves. Okay. Um, so I cut those and put death shadows in there. I don't remember what else I cut. I have to bring the list up. Yeah, but like, I think like a death shadow, like dreadhorde arcanist, mm-hmm. where you're already playing just like a giant pile of ones. Yeah. Where like you're just like buying back Blood Chief's Thirst and Thought Ceases and Fatal Pushes. And like, you know, you're basically thinking about like the black, like the black white list. And you're like, you know what? I'm not going to play Adanto Vanguard. Yeah. I'm going to just play like Dreadhorde Arcanist. And mm-hmm. that's how I'm going to win the game. Yeah. I mean, like, when you're playing the deck, how many thought seizes cast? Do you like cast? No, do you want to cast? One every turn? All of them, right? Yeah. So that's what Dreadhorde Arcanist lets you do, is just cast them every turn. This past week, I definitely scooped on turn three to an opponent who went, thought seize me, play Dreadhorde Arcanist, play Young Pyromancer, attack with Dreadhorde Arcanist, thought seize you again. Yeah. I was like, yep, I have nothing left. Like, yeah. this game is done. Yep. And, like, you win every game you do that. Mm-hmm. And you probably win most games where you go, like, you know, oh, Agadim's Awakening, Thought Seize, then, like, play. Um, Thought Seize, Death Shadow. Yeah, Thought Seize, Death Shadow. Or, yeah. you know, you play, like, the 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 red land and you're like shock that mm-hmm. play play by death shadow it's a one yep. one yep and then like it just like gets huge the next turn yep like you win all of those games as well like you just have a bunch of ways that you're just like and the game is over mm-hmm. oh uh real fun death shadow thing I watched a bunch of opponents like slowly come to this realization mm-hmm. let's say your opponent's death shadow is a one one Mm-hmm. And you attack with a 1-1 one, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. Your 1-1 one, one dies and they keep their death shadow. Right, yeah. Because all the damage is dealt at the same time. Right, so, and it's state-based. Yeah, your life, the life total changes. Right. And the death shadow grows at the same time. So, like, my opponent attacked and I was like, block your 1-1. One, one. I'll take 2. My death shadow is a 3-3 three, three now. Your 1-1 mm-hmm. one, is dead. And your death shadow has one damage marked on it. Yeah. So yep. just be aware of that, that. That is something you can do both on blocks and like, you know, don't be the person that like runs into that. Right. So, I mean, if they need to kill your tutu, they can just be like, block your tutu trade. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no. Yeah. Like I could see where like the red black list, like having claim fame and just being able to like buy back your death shadows. Yeah. Where you're like, you need to find them, but once you find right. them, you just have infinite thems. Mm-hmm. I was playing Scourge of the Skyclaves. That card, like, simultaneously feels, like, busted and awful. I wasn't impressed with it. Like, there are times where you play it, and it's like, yo, I got an 8-8. And then there are yeah. times it's in your hand, and you're like, my, like, my the game started with, like, Thought Seize, our removal spell you, Thought Seize you, and you've mm-hmm. dealt your opponent no damage. Right. And it's a two mana zero zero. <laughs> and you're yeah. just like, huh. Well then. I have two mana zero zero. This is bad. 
Or your opponent's playing like mono white life gain. I beat a mono white life gain player. I not with scourge. Not with scourge, but they yeah. played. They were at twenty eight, and they attacked me and put me to one. Yeah, and I had 12, 12, 12, 12. I had three death shadows. They attacked. Ooh. I didn't block. I went to one, <laughs> and they yeah. had some blockers. And I was like, kill a blocker, kill a blocker, attack. And nice. they were no longer at 28. Yeah. They were at Dead. negative a lot. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Like, yep. those are the games that, like, Ranger of Eos looks great when you're like, oh, like, the game's gone slow. I can get my Ranger. I can get two Death Shadows. And I can, like, spend two mana and play two 8-8s. Eight right. Right? And you're like, oh, that's great. And then the other times you're like, why am I playing this awful card? Like, <laughs> you need some way to draw cards. Like, you need some way to find your Death Shadows. Yeah. So, like, I saw people playing Treacherous Blessing. Yeah, I had started messing around with Treacherous Blessing, too. I think, like, you had texted me about Treacherous Blessing, and I said that, you know, it's really funny because I had just put a couple in the list that I was messing with. Yeah, like, it good. Like, you just need velocity because, like, everything yeah. in your deck is super cheap. Yep. And You, you just know, need a lot of it. Yeah, you just need to keep getting it, and then eventually you're just like, I'm going to play this one mana spell that is better than anything you can do. Mm -hmm. All right. So blue, black. Yeah. So like blue, black and black green, I haven't seen any of, I was just trying to brainstorm like what the list might look like. Yeah. And I think that blue, black is probably going to look something close to rogues. Like it's going to be a tempo -y deck with some like protection, like spell pierce or dive down or something. Yeah, where, you, again, you're leaning on, like, Thoughtseize and the Bolt Lands to, like, yeah. deal yourself damage. And then you're just trying to disrupt your opponent enough. Right. You know, stuff like Brazen Borrower, like, mm -hmm. hey, bounce your thing. Or, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, like, you have your Spell Cat, uh, Spell Pierce, Dive Down. You know, drown on the lock to some degree. Just any kind of things to, yeah. to like slow them down. Yep. Uh, Looking to play like a more tempo-y game. Yeah, like you lose the like, you know, you lose the like into the story kind of value. Yeah. But because like, uh, but you could definitely play like a different kind of like tempo-y game mm -hmm. with it. Like you do get access to opt, which lets you fix your draws to again find your find your death shadow yeah like i think that like opt and charter course are probably mm -hmm. all stars in this kind of deck yeah. where again you're probably on like knight of the ebon legion and yeah. death shadow to try to make you know to give you your threats and then i think the problem is like there's not like a like i guess brazen bower is your best like blue threat but it's a double blue yeah. And like I don't think you want to play like, you know, the the two drop rogue. Right. In in the not rogue not uh, rogue deck. Right. Yeah, so. it just doesn't do anything at that point. Yeah. And then yeah, black green like it's like, "Oh, you have good protection spells with blossoming defense and like snake skin veil." Mm -hmm. And then like you don't want to play Assassin's Trophy. Like, if you had Abrupt Decay, you could probably talk me into it a little bit more. Yeah. But there's no, like, good green cards that are, like, pushing you to do this. So, in black-green, I think the deck would want to be more mid rangey And that's probably not where you want to be when you're playing one-mana 12-12s. So, yeah, I don't know what the, the black-green deck looks like. Like, the, like the, the good green cards, like, kind of incidentally gain you life. Right, like, which ooh, is awkward. I want to play scavenging is. It's like, well, about yeah. about that. <laughs> about that. That's probably a problem. Now, the yeah. biggest knock on Death Shadow is claim the firstborn. Yeah, but it's also another reason to be playing black red. As you can claim other people's. Yeah, or, you can claim your opponents. Or you can claim yours. Yeah, I've claimed mine as well. Give them haste. Yep. Ooh, and like I, I've not seen, like, Claim the Firstborn with Dreadhorde Arcanist. I play it. Uh, I've not seen it. Like, that just sounds gross. Well, yeah. Just no, like, it's great. Uh, gimme. Thank like, you. It, all it does is clear the blocker. 
because yeah, which is you can't all you attack do. with it. But yeah, I mean, I'll send you my list if you want. Yeah, yeah, no, that's interesting. The other cards we we had some other cards we were thinking about. We already mentioned Treacherous Blessing gives mm-hmm. you a way to draw cards and like lose life, take some life. Yep. Stormfist Crusader, which like I love that card. I want that card desperately to be good, but yeah. like it seems awkward to be the Thought Seize deck that's also mm-hmm. giving your opponent cards. Yeah, I was just trying to think of some way to refill. Yeah, because like before I moved to the black red version. Um, the white black version in particular, I found myself like empty handed and not having anything to do a lot. Yeah. That was my, and just like falling behind. Yeah. Like if you got behind, you could, you could stay even, but it was hard to like get enough cards to, to get ahead. Yeah. So I was trying to think of some like Bob type effect that would let you catch back up. And oh. I don't think you went sleep siphoner. Like I thought I about just that card. Cool. It might just too be slow. too slow. But, like, I had thought about Glintsley Siphoner as a way to, like, gain cards. Like, I could see trying that, like, over, like, the Scourge of the Skyclave that, like, I found yeah. thoroughly unimpressive. Right. But I feel like the games end up going relatively long. Mm-hmm. Longer because, than you expect them to. Yeah, because you are just, like, kind of grinding your opponent to dust. Yeah. So, like, just a Glintsley Siphoner in a deck that has Claim Fame. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I killed your Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Bring it back. Yep. Give it haste. Let's go. Yep. Like, I'm just going to keep rebuying these stupid idiot cards and they're going to kill you. Right. Right. Like, you know, you know, you have like 16 threats where you're like four, like eight one drops, like four Death Shadows, four Knight of the Ebon Legion, four Dreadheart mm-hmm. Arcanist, four um, Glint Sleeve Siphoners. And then you're just like, and everything else is a thought seize or a removal spell. Yep. And we'll see how you do. Yeah, I think I cut, now that I'm thinking about it, I cut the Scourge of Skyclaves from my Arcanist list, and I think I cut two Call of the Death Dwellers. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, that card could be great with Death Shadow too. Yeah. Uh, other cards you're thinking about, like Funeral Rites, that's the, like, draw two, lose two, mill some. Yeah, mill two, I think. Yeah, but it's three mana. But it's so- in a sorcery speed. Yeah, like, we need, like, a Night's Whisper. Or what is it? Sign oh, yeah. in- or Sign in Blood? That's the black, Sign black one? Blood. Yep. Yeah, like, either one of those two cards would, like, be great and kind of push this archetype. Yep. No, I mean, I don't really think the archetype needs pushing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would fill that, like, I need a way to like bridge yeah. like thought sees into draw two cards, lose some life. Now I get to like play my death shadow on three and be right. up cards. Yep. Ascendant, th- uh, Ascendant, Ascendant Spe- spirit. Yeah. The, the snow figure of Level. destiny. Yeah. I know this probably like it probably doesn't work, but my thought behind it was that, up to this point, when I was writing this episode, I hadn't, I don't, had only played the white black versions, and like I said, I kept finding myself with nothing to do. So I was trying to think of things that, like after I found there wasn't a whole lot of good card draw, like something that I could still use my mana on. Yeah, the the and, problem with this uh, that I saw so I was just like to make the mana work. Yeah, like it's too hard to have a bunch of also snowlands. Well, it, like the red black list that I'm running runs nine basics, I think. Yeah, yeah, but like to get to that like last, like I guess getting it to being a four four when you have three basics. Yeah, I guess it would be the end of the world. Um, Roiling vortex was cute. Yeah, I, you like that one? Yeah, I was like, huh. <laughs> like it's a clock. It's hard to interact with. Mm-hmm. It like just like. If it was in your main deck and you just like your opponent was like so warden, you're just like excellent. <laughs> your deck does Let's do nothing. This. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a red up the whole g- upkeep. Pay a red. Yep. Enjoy your vanilla mm-hmm. two two. Mm-hmm. Argyle's bloodfast. The black white list I was playing had two in the sideboard. Yeah, I saw a couple lists that were playing a couple copies of this somewhere in the seventy five. Yeah, like but... I feel like just in the sideboard, it's kind of a hammer. Yeah. Like you're you're playing against like a control player and you're just like, ha ha. <laughs> Guess what you can't beat. That's right. And it makes all my one mana spells giant. Let's go. 
This is an oldie but a goodie. This last mm-hmm. one. Did you know this one was on Arena? Uh, I did know this was on Arena. Yeah. It was in um, Jumpstart, right? Yes. So Phyrexian yeah. Reclamation. It's a yeah. black for an enchantment. You pay one in the black and two life. Yep. And you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Mm-hmm. Another so, like something to do with your mana. Yeah, I mean, it kind of fills the, like, you know, kind of the claim part of yeah. claim fame. While also, like, letting you, like, spend some life. I mean, it is mm-hmm. limited. Like, you know, you get yourself down to, like, three. And you're right. like, well, I want this Death Shadow back. But I also don't want to be at one. Yeah. So... But, like, it could be something where you have, like, as a one of. Mm -hmm. You just have it where, like, you know, you're playing against, like, a control deck and you stick it and you're just like, cool, I'm going to pay, like, six life and, like, refill my hand with actual good stuff. Another card that's not on my list here, but Phyrexian Arena is on Arena also. Oh, yeah. That would be good. I think three mana might be... Yeah, like, Treacherous Blessings, three mana for four cards or three cards? It's three cards. It's three cards. But it's like you pay three and you get all three at the same time. Right. And Frixian Arena, like, you pay three and then, like, you're on the installment plan. Well, it, it's one damage every turn. Yeah, it's, it's one like damage every turn, but, but you're once. getting, like, it's not like yeah. you get all three cards. Right, right? yeah. Like, if you were going to draw three Death Shadows, mm-hmm. right, you're not going to see that third Death Shadow until, like, two turns. Right. Where Treacherous Blossing, you're just like, here are my three Death Shadows, go. Right. And then this last one warms my heart. <laughs> yeah, something completely different, right? Yes. Um, we talked about this a little bit when we did the Ikoria set review show. I don't think anybody has spoken a word of it since Death Shadow's been on Arena, though. Yes. And that's uh, Nethroi with Death Shadow. When Nethroi mutates, you get to reanimate creatures from your graveyard with... Was it power less than t- or Combined. cumulative power less than 10 or something like yeah. that so the way death shadow works is when it's in your graveyard and you have 20 life it has negative seven power so it's just like free it, right it, like so you, it makes it so you can get to 17 right instead of 10 right so you can just like reanimate like everything everything right i yeah i don't know if it's good but i thought i'm it was assuming fun. that if you did that you could find some combination of things to kill your opponent i would hope so i don't know what that combination of things is but i'm assuming if you do it they just die <laughs> yeah i mean 17 power all in one turn is yeah some way to give it terrifying. haste yeah yeah there's that big stupid dragon that gives all your creatures double strike Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's like you get that guy back, you get some other stuff. It it, it works <laughs> out. Uh Terror of the Peaks is probably good. Oh gosh, yeah, you're just like here are three Terror of the Peaks, like you yeah. like insta loose. <laughs> if you can figure out some way to do it and like, you know, hurt yourself. Like I was I was thinking like, oh, like, you know, how many things do you put back into play with uh Command the Dreadhorde? You're just like here am I like my my death shadows and you hurt yourself on the front end right and you're just like oh hey i was at 20 now i'm not <laughs> so yeah i mean if you like ugin for death shadows that puts you to eight yeah here here's some five fives <laughs> i am not going to down take my ugin go i will bolt you i will bolt you yes i am not going to down take this all right so there are some death shadow thoughts like i just keep going back to like you had mentioned this on the pre-show i think that if a card is the best thing to do in legacy and one of the best well if it's one of if it's a thing you can do in legacy and not get laughed at Mm -hmm. and it's one of the better things you could do in modern right i'm assuming that it's probably something that's good in pioneer yeah or not, not pioneer historic right, right. it's got to be good here right if it's like you don't have all the pieces but you're also not playing against fully powered versions of every other deck yeah i mean you're not playing against tron yeah 
Right, like, oh, hey, cool. Being my big mana deck has to play a five mana do nothing on like turn four, and it's like, cool. Attack right. you for thirty. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like these decks are definitely worth tinkering around with. Yeah, and I and think like the nice part about Thoughtseize decks too is like you have game against everybody. Yeah, you can't like you're just not dead. Yeah, like you. That's why there are like. What are the best decks? What have the de- best decks kind of been in the format? It's been like Black Red Pyromancer because it has Thoughtseize. Yep. And like Jun Sacrifice. Yep. Because it has, has Thoughtseize. Thought yeah. And Sultai because it had Thoughtseize and Uro. Right. Right? Like, you know, I've been playing on and off bigger Thoughtseize decks. Like, I had posted an Abzan list. Mm-hmm. Which I actually was- like that list a lot. Uh, I haven't sent you my my Jun list. Oh no! Oh yeah, yeah. So this is another uh, real quick. This is it, an, an an exercise in like how to watch content. Mm-hmm. So like I've been watching, as I've said, like a lot of like low stress stuff. So I was watching Krim, the Asian Avenger. He played a historic one on one, and he played Jund. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I want to play Jund and like land destruction. So we had like creeping mold and casualties of war. Right, but watching it like him like playing Shan- thought seizes into Chandra's and then like ramping into using the Chandra to then play uh, Tybalt's, it was like oh, hmm. there's something here, right? But yeah. you know, I don't want to play Creeping Mold. I don't want right. to play Casualties of War. And I was like, well, the Creeping well, I mean, Mold Casualties of War is a lot of fun. It is. It is. That's what he was saying. But yeah. I was like, well, let's turn the Creeping Molds into Binding of the Old Gods. Oh, yeah, there let's, you go. Let's turn uh, these two casualties of war. Let's play like an extra Ugin and an extra Chandra. Mm-hmm. Like, let's like put some castles in the mana base so you can grind out control decks. Hmm. Okay, cool. So, like, I took like his list that had like some like kind of meme th- fun stuff right. and was like, okay, let's put actual good cards in these slots <laughs> and see, see what, what happens. It turns into. And it like yeah. I played it and like played against blue white control, just mm-hmm. annihilated them. Hmm. Like they're like I was like I'm gonna draw way more cards than you. Here's my yeah. Chandra. I'm just gonna draw cards until you deal with her. Oh, you didn't? Okay, well, you died. Yeah. Like, you know, like I'm just gonna keep like running this stuff into you, and you just have to keep answering it. And mm-hmm. it was really solid. And like it was just like what are what are the best thought seize decks you can put together? Yeah. And like I think that's what this format comes down to. And that's why you guys are going to send us cards that can make it so it's not a thought seize format and they're not Veil of Summer. <laughs> yeah, hope, hopefully you, we can uh, fix that. You can't send us Veil of Summer. All right, so I think with all of this, I think we have a show. I do think we have a show. So if you would like to tweet us your ideas for uh, Historic Anthologies 5, you know, mm-hmm. the one that's actually good, you can tweet at us at Casual Tripod. Yep. Or you can hit us up on Facebook at Casual Tryhard MTG. You can email us show at Casual Tryhard MTG dot com. If you're looking to pick up singles with uh, Time Spell Remastered coming out, usually wait about a week after release, pick up whatever singles you want. Please use our TCG player affiliate link, TCG dot Casual Tryhard MTG dot com. Uh, anything you purchase after following that link, will automatically we'll get a small percentage of to help keep the show going super low effort you don't actually have to do anything except for use that link to get to tcg player uh, if you want to support us a little bit more directly you can do so at patreon.com slash casual tryhard mtg we greatly appreciate all of our patrons and anything you can do to help us out we would appreciate as well uh, we also have our discord room there's a link in the description a link on social media if you can't get in, send us a message some way, and we will send you a link. I'll make that room. Uh, I'm going to call it class participation. I'll make a room in Discord and hop on over there with your suggestions for historic anthology numero five. Numero five, and like I said, we'll get it. We'll get it right in tomorrow's hands, or like, yep, uh, at Magic Arena, and be like, hey, here hey. are some thoughts from here's some thoughts from the community. That's right. 
the best community. Yeah, our community. Thank you very much. Our run, community. Run these. Run these past someone in the uh, in typey type uh, uh, program land. Have them. Have yeah. them uh, put them right in. Run these up the flagpole. Yeah. So salute your shorts. <laughs> there. Gosh, I'm Camp sure. Bonawana. We hold, hold you, you in, in our hearts. hearts. And when we think about you, it makes us it makes wanna... me want to fart. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are old. In case you were wondering, yep. And uh, with that, we will awful get... waffles. Yeah, we will catch you <laughs> on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet. Well, I wonder how many people are going to, like, uh, unsubscribe <laughs> after we sing. All of them. All of them. Why were there no downloads? Well, you see, what happened was... <laughs> we started singing. <laughs>